We continue now at the top of Daf Ayin Hayim and Beis Maseches Erevin. This is Erevin Daf Seventy Five B. The Gemara continues Tanya Nami Hachu. We have a brisa like this as well, uh, confirming what we said earlier that the Mokum Echod is the outer Chutzer. The brisa says Nasnu Eruvin Bechitzona. Let's say they place their Erev in the outer Chutzer. Again, that's the case in the Mishnah. That's what the Mishnah called the Mokum Echod. If the Erev, the actual food, was placed in the outer Chutzer, Meshakach Echod Bein Min Achitzona Uvein Min Apnimis, and somebody forgot to join the Erev, it doesn't matter if he's a resident of the outer Chutzer or the inner Chutzer. Below Erev, he doesn't join the Erev. Shte and Asuras, they're both going to be Asur again, as we said. The reason is because the people on the inner Chutzer have now moved themselves, so to speak. They've moved their residence to the outer Chutzer, so they can't just close off and say, hey, we don't want to be part of this anymore. Even if someone from the outer Chutzer forgot to join the Erev, they also are prohibited. Now the Brisa continues here. Nasnu Eruvan Let's say you have a situation where all the food was put in the inner Chutzer. And somebody on the inside joined the Erev. So now the inside, the inner Chatzar is Asr. So Shtei and Asura. So they're actually both going to be Asr because the Pneem is the inner one, is Asr b'makoma, And it's going to Asr Shalom b'makoma. It's going to Asr the outer Chatzar. However, in this case, let's say again, the food is all placed in the inner Chatzar and someone from the outer Chatzar does not join the Erev. This is going to be a machlokas tanoim. Shtei and Asuros, Divrei Rabbi Akiva. According to Rabbi Akiva, they're both going to be prohibited. Again, in this particular situation, somebody from the outer Chatzar forgot to join the uh, the uh, the Erev, and the Erev was placed in the inner Chatzar. So that's going to cause a problem now. They've all joined together. The Chachamim, the Chachamim say, Bazu Pnimis Muteris. In this case, the inner one can be Mutter, Vechitzon Asur, and the outer one can be Asur. And the logic of the Chachamim, we're going to go more into this in the Gemara, but the logic of the Chachamim is the inner one say, forget it. We joined an era for our benefit. We don't want to join this era for our detriment, and therefore we don't want to have anything to do with you. So we want to stay mutter. But Rabbi Kiva says, no, they joined together with the outer chutzer. They made an era together. They placed it all in the inner chutzer. So it's going to be a problem. Rashi over here says, Shtei and Asuros, Divir Rabbi Kiva, Velo Amrino, and Testalik Pnimis Mina. According to Rabbi Kiva, the inner one can't say, hey, get out of here. Kidim Mefarsh Lakame, the Erev Hachitsona, Hamunach Lesochem, Argila Sham, because the food was placed in the inner chutzer, the people from the outside are regular to come in there. They become like traffic that goes into the inner chutzer. And according to Rabbi Kiva, the inner chutzer cannot remove themselves from the outer chutzer. So this is a machlokas Tanoim. But the Gemara now wants to understand what's the logic. So I'm going to lay Rav Barchanan Labaya. Rav Barchanan says to, to Abaya, what is the difference that the Rabbonin say that in this case, the people in the inner Chatzar can close their door and say, we don't want to have anything to do with you, and they're mutter. And the Rebbe Kiva Nami, Teichud Dashu Tashamish. Why can't Rebbe Kiva say the same thing? Why can't they just close their door, say they want to have nothing to do with the outer Chatzar since someone from the outer Chatzar didn't join the Erev, and then they can, uh, then they're allowed to use their Chatzar. Amar Lay, so he said back to him, as we said in Rashi, Eruv Margila. The Eruv makes it as though the traffic from the outer Chatzar is going into the Chatzar. The Eruv says, we are residents of your inner Chatzar, we travel here as well. So now the people from the outer Chatzar prohibit the inner Chatzar. So the Gemara says, Nami, Eruv Margila. Well, according to the Rabbanan, also doesn't the Eruv bring the traffic from the outer Chatzar into the inner Chatzar? It should be a problem. Gemara answers, No, it's not a problem, because the people in the inner Chatzar say, look, we made an Erev for our benefit, not to mess us up, so let's ignore the Erev that we joined together with you and forget it. So the Rebbe Kiva Nami, Well, if that's the case, why doesn't Rebbe Kiva say the same thing? So finally the Gemara says, you're right. Rabbi Akiva did not mean to say that the inner one is completely prohibited. All he meant was that in order for the inner one to be permitted, the outer one has to be mevatel de rishus. According to Rabbi Akiva, it's not an automatic. We don't simply say that, hey, the Erev was made for our benefit not to mess us up. Rather, what we say is, do a bitl. The people in the outer chutzr say, we're mevatel rishus. We no longer need, want to have any permission to go into your chutzr. And then, indeed, everything will be okay. The Rabbanan, but the Rabbanan say, Ain bitl rishos, me chatzer lechatzer. The Rabbanan say, there is no bitl rishos. They hold, you're not allowed to be mevatel your rishos from one chatzer to the next. And therefore, instead, they apply this idea that, hey, this area was made to be beneficial. It wasn't made to our detriment. And since you're not allowed to do bitl from one chatzer to the other, the area is just null because we didn't make it for our detriment. So Gemara now says, Leim Shmuel of Rabbi Yochanan, we plugs the Rabban of Rabbi Akiva, Kamiflagi. We had a machlok a Shmuel and Rabbi Yochanan, whether you're allowed to do bittel from one chutzer to the other. That seems to be the machlokas over here as well. Rabbi Akiva says, this Erev doesn't mess anything up because you could just do bittel. And the Rabban say, there is no bittel from one chutzer to the other. So the Erev is serving as a detriment. So therefore we just remove the Erev. We say an Erev 
It's only made for benefit, not for detriment. That seems to be the same machlokas. Let us say that's the issue. To Shmuel, Amr Karabon, and Rabbi Yochanan, Dabr Karabi Akiva. Again, Shmuel says, like the Rabbonin, you're not allowed to do bittel from Chatzar to Chatzar. Rabbi Yochanan's like Rabbi Akiva, you are allowed to do bittel from Chatzar to Chatzar. Gemara says, not necessarily. Amr Lech Shmuel, Shmuel can respond to you, I know the Amri Afilo the Rabbi Akiva. I can go even according to Rabbi Akiva. Adkan lo kam Rabbi Akiva hocha elo b'shtei chatzer azulif nimizu. Rabbi Akiva says that bittel works over here because you've got one chatzer inside, so to speak, the other. There's traffic it travels through. The asrin hadadi. It's a situation where one chatzer asers the other. In a situation where one chatzer asers the other, so then you can imagine bittel. Avol hasam, but over there in the classic case of one chatzer to the next, mikah asrin hadadi. There is no connection enough between the two chatzers. They don't even prohibit one another. Therefore, there's no bittel. Rashi here explains. The Azra Nahadadi Al Yadei Hergil Ha'erev. In this case, the Erev was placed in the inner Chatzar, and the outer people kind of walk through, so to speak, the inner Chatzar. So through the Erev, they Aser. Umi Toch Shaos from Mevatlan. So since they prohibit because they now walk into there, they kind of, they're connected, there's also a concept of Bittal. Bechiamri Anna, but where did I say there's no Bittal? Bishtei Chatzar Su Pesach by name. I'm talking about where you have two Chatzars with a door between them. Below Erev, where they didn't make an Erev together. Happens to be on Shabbos, they decide, hey, now we want to carry things one to the other. There in Mavatlan. There, there was, they, they never prohibited one another. They just decide on Shabbos, we want to carry things from one to the other. There, that's where he says you're not allowed to do bittel. So that's what, uh, that's what Shmuel will, will respond. Again, in a situation where there's a pro- prohibition going from one to the other, bittel might work. Here, there's no reason bittel should work. And Rabbi Yochanan says the other way around. Rabbi Yochanan, Amar, I know, the Amri Afil, the Rabbonin. Rabbi Yochanan says, I can follow even the Rabbonin. In other words, the Rabbonin over here say, sure, there's no bittel. But in my case, maybe there would be meaning. How does it work? Over here, the Rabbanon say, look, uh, before you do any bittal, this Erev is serving as a detriment, therefore the Erev just simply disappears. But over here, there's no Isser at all, and so therefore we might as well do bittal. As Rashi here explains, uh, the people on the inside say, before you do the bittal, Ato Sarah Salah, you're causing a prohibition. Hilkach, therefore, Dalant, Vidal Bitulach. Let's remove you, remove the Bittal to Lobinanli. We don't need this Erev at all. So we basically say, look, before the Bittal ever came along, there's a prohibition. Let's just remove it. But over here, Miko Asar, Tchatzar Al Chaverta, here, one Chatzar didn't answer the other. The Pesach Shabbinei and below Erev with a Pesach. Diamrit Tevatel Nahavi Ivas. So in this particular case, you're not going to say that, oh, if we should do a Bittal, before you did a bittel, there's going to be some kind of corruption. There's no corruption over here at all. There's nothing, there's no detriment being caused. So since there's no detriment being caused, we don't have this idea of let's remove you, let's remove your bittel. We never remove the bittel. We never remove anything. And therefore, a bittel could still be a, a bittel could still be a possibility. Gemara now continues at the two dots with the Mishnah. Again, it said that if the inner chutzr and the outer chutzr are only owned by one sole individual, then it's not going to be a problem because the inner chutzr is muteras b'makom. It's not going to answer the outer chutzr. So the Gemara says, Amar of Yosef, Rav Yosef says, Tani Rebbe, hayu gimel asurin. Rebbe said that if there's three people, it's a problem. It's a problem. Meaning, it doesn't matter if you have two in the inner, which is obviously a problem, but even two in the outer is a problem because we make a gazer where people get confused. People will think, oh, if two in the outer is okay, then two in the inner is okay. And that's for sure not true. If two are in the inner and they didn't make an Erev, so it's Asura B'mekom, it's for sure a problem. So Rav Yosef quoted that in the name of Rebbe. So Amar Luhu Rebbevi, so Rebbevi responded to them, Losat Tzitzulei, don't listen to Rav Yosef, as we've mentioned many times, Rav Yosef forgot his learning in his older age. So they said that quote from Rebbe is incorrect because it wasn't from Rebbe. I know I'm Risa Nihila, um Ishmaid Ravada Barava I'm Risa Nihila. I actually had made that statement. I told it to him, and I said in the name of Ravada Barava. Hoel Vani Kore Bohen Ravan Bechitsona. And the Svar is, since you have a majority in the Chitsona, again, it's gonna be a problem. Once it's called a Ravim, it is a problem. That's the reason I gave. Since you have a Ravim in the Chitsona, even if it's not in the Panimas, we make a Gazer and we say, if you have two residents in the outer one, it's gonna be a problem. Amr of Yosef, Rav Yosef says, Mare de Avram, Rabbim Berebi Echlefli. Rav Yosef said like an oath, Master of Abraham, I just got confused with the word Rabbim and Rebbe. It was said to me as Rabbim, Rabbim and Rebbe kind of sound alike, so I thought it was a statement made from Rebbe. Well, Shmuel, Amr Shmuel says, Leola Mutaras Achiu Shnaim Bepnimis. Shmuel says, there's no such a Kazeir. It's all, it's all fine unless you have two people on the inside, Beachot Bechitzon and one on the outside, but if you'd, you'd have two people on the outside, according to Shmuel, 
it would not be a problem. Amr Rebbe Lozer says, V'nochri harehu A non-Jew is also going to be considered like a rabbin, meaning, what Rashi explains here is, let's say one Nochri lives in the inner Chatzar, and two Yisraelim live in the outer Chatzar, it's going to be a problem. The, the fact that the Nachri walks through is going to be a problem. Now, there you'll say, why should that be a problem? Why should the Nachri be, be worse, than the, uh, be worse than, the, than the Jew? So the Gemara is going to explain that as follows. Gemara says, Ma'ishno Yisrael de lo asar, de man de yada yada, man de lo yada, savar e ruve e He says, I don't understand. What's the difference? By a Jew, it's not a problem because the person who knows the halacha, that when there's one individual Regal Hamutaris is okay, will know the halacha. That's fine, no confusion. And the one who doesn't know that halacha will think that they all made an Arif, so no one's going to get confused. So Nachri Nami, by a Nachri also, Amrin and the Yada Yada, those who know the halacha that the Nachri shouldn't ask or know the halacha, the Lo Yada, and those who don't know the halacha, Savar Agire Ogar, Agire Ogar, they'll think, okay, you hired out the Rishos of the Nachri, as we've said earlier in the Masechta, when you have a Nachri in a Chatzar, you're allowed to pay him and rent his Rishos from him, and it won't be a problem. So why should a Nachri be any worse than one Yisrael? If one Yisrael is okay, one Nachri should be okay. So the Gemara says, no, Stam Nachri is the Mifapoi. He says that by a Nachri, if he rented out his Rishos, there's a coal. People know that that's true. A, a, a rumor goes out. So people are not going to think that he rented out his rishos because they didn't hear anything. So they're actually going to get confused because they're not going to know the halacha about one person not assering. They won't realize that that's the halacha. Instead, they're going to think that it doesn't make any difference if you have one person on the inside or two people on the inside. They're going to think it's all the same thing and there's going to be a confusion. And the Gemara now continues. Amar Rav Yudah, Mar Shmuel. Rav Yudah says in the name of Shmuel, Yud batim zel if nimizel. Let's say you have ten houses one inside the other, meaning they're all lined up one right after the other, going straight to a chutzr. And the person, let's say, in the 10th house has to walk through all the houses to get to the chutzr. So in such a situation, pnimi nosen es eruv Only the innermost one needs to give his food to the Erev, and that is sufficient. Nobody else needs to provide food for the Erev. Rashi says, yud badem zelef nemizeh, chitzam pasuach lechutzr. The outermost one opens into the chutzr. The cool and juices raglo olav, pnimi doris es kulon. The guy in the innermost walks through all of them. To get to the chazer, shein lo yitzi al aderach zu kula nasin base sharlo. So Rashi explains the halach here. They all have the status of what's called a base shara gateway. Ve'ain an oser al bnei chazer. They don't aser el pnimi levado. Only the pnimi really is the one that asers. The base shar, If you have a status of a base shar, you don't have to join the eruv. Kedamar mepirkan vador shavein oser hilkach kishaboyin shar diurn hapsuchin lechazer laarav es chazer and pnimi zen nosin pas ba'ashar yitzrichin. Only the innermost needs to give the food. Nobody else needs to give the food. That's according to Shmuel. Rabbi Yochanan says, no, even the outermost needs to give food. Gemara says, that's crazy. Chitzon beis sharu. Certainly the outermost house is just a gateway. That certainly will not, he, cert- he certainly doesn't need to join the Erev. So the Gemara says, no, we mean chitzon shel pnimi. Even the, basically the ninth house, even the outer house in reference to the innermost house. So the second last house, the one that needs to go through all the houses except for that uh, one right behind it, he also needs to join. Why does that? Uh, why does that second uh, last house also need to join? What's the issue here? But my kamiflagi, what are they arguing about? Marsavar base shar the yochich may base shar. One holds that a base shar even of one house is considered a base shar. If you hold the base shar even of one house is considered a base shar, then no one needs to get food except for the innermost house. However, Marsavar the other one holds losh may base shar. That's not called a base shar. If you're a if you're a base shar only for one house, you're not really a base shar. You are considered a resident. And you will need to join the Erev as well. So according to that opinion, the ninth and the 10th house need to join the Erev. Amar Rav Nachman, Amar Rav Baravu, Amar Rav. Rav Nachman says in the name of Rav Baravu, in the name of Rav, Beis Chatseros v'gimel batin b'nei. And if you have two Chatseros with three houses between them, the diagram looks as follows. You have a Chatser here. There's other houses maybe on this side. Chatser, other houses on this side. And then there are these three houses right in the middle. So you got this middle house. And let's say this house over here is really kind of like a base shar for this house. This guy walks through here. It's like a gateway into the chutzer. And the same thing with this house. It's like a gateway into there. So that's the case. So beis chutzeros v'gimel batim b'neim, two chutzeros with three houses between them. Zeb ba derech, zeb v'nosen eseruva ba zeh. This guy, this person over here walks through this house to put his eruv over here. V'zeb ba derech, zeb v'nosen eruva ba zeh. Same thing with people in this chutzer. They walk through this house as a gateway and put their eruv over here. And we'll continue with this discussion in the next video on Daf Ayin Vav, Ahmed Aleph.